Okay, so first what we're going to do, we'll just start talking to you guys a little bit before, until she comes out here. Um, what is your background with Bells? Have you used Bells? Have you not used Bells? Yes. I mean, I've trained with Nagar from the time I have my HPC, so I'm... Okay, so you have? I have had one introduction to the belts. Okay. Do you mind... strong first. Okay. Do you mind taking your shoes off? Shoes and socks? Nope. Okay. <laughs> I have Just... Also, but I've never been coached because I've always been watching videos, so... Okay. You do. A yeah. little bit? A little bit of kettlebell experience? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to assess your swing where it's at right now, where you're coming in with and then we will break it down. So we're gonna go back to the deadlift, we're gonna talk about setup and all of those things, and then we'll revisit your swing. So partner up with someone, like I said, a bell that's um, something that you feel comfortable swinging, and then we're going to look at the swing, and then we'll go from there. Okay? Um, so this is probably 35. like 35, 30, 35. It doesn't actually have a number on it, but it looks like Okay, 30. so you guys can, how about you two take this one? Can we, can we do names really quick? So that I'm not just like, hey you? Yes. Jill? Jill. Jill. Kelly? Stephanie. Stephanie. Joanne. Joanne. Kara. Kara. Karen. 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 We'll just look at where you guys are at. Too late. Oh, treat it like it's heavy. <laughs> okay, just a couple reps. Good. And then with your partner. Did you go yet? No. Okay, yeah, you can go. Okay. Great. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is give you a drill that's gonna help you find your foot placement and also load your glutes, okay? So you guys are going to come to the wall and you're gonna take one foot out, go about shoulder width or slightly wider. So and I, you're going I'm usually to gonna be here. Reach, okay, we're not sitting on the wall, we're not squatting. If you're squatting, you're gonna find that you, you maybe don't touch the wall, but you're just loading. So you're hinging and back up. Hinge and back up. If that's easy, Scoot out a little bit. Okay. Yeah, scoot back. You will have bend in the knee, but the bend is kind of as an afterthought. Because you're sending your hips back so far, your knees are going to bend. But they're not going to bend where you ha bend at the ankles and have yeah. ankle flexion and knees come forward. So Your knees are going to bend so that you can load your hamstrings and your glutes and not load your low back. That's really why your knees are going to bend. Okay. So if you feel like you're getting a lot of forward knee bend, or ankle bending, you can visualize that you're in concrete from the knees down. So your knees are going to, like she said, she's going to bend to load your glutes and your hamstrings. Good. Okay. Cool. Go ahead and come back to your bell with your new stance. And we're going to mm -hmm. demo the deadlift because that is a progression or regression in this case to the swing. So you're going to stand over your bell. I'll just borrow this one really quick. Okay. So it's gonna be between your feet yeah. or by your ankles, okay? It's never gonna be in front of you for a deadlift. And then you're just gonna hinge at the hips, find your bell, load the lats, and stand up. And find your plank at the top, okay? And get nice and tall. Think about the eye position. You're actually looking out kind of at the horizon. You're not tucking your chin in and looking down and then looking up. Are you sure you Good. can lift that? <laughs> oh, I don't want you to think about pulling the bell off of the ground. I want you to think about pushing your feet into the ground. So you want to think about anytime with kettlebells in particular, but any anytime you're you're using weights, you want to think about the weight, the load as not a, a foreign object, but as an extension of your body. And then when you start to think of it as an extension of your body as part of you, you're going to be a lot more connected to it. So you're not pulling it off the ground. You just happen to be pushing your feet through the ground as you're holding on to something. Good. Okay. 
The other thing that you'll find is if you are thinking about pulling it, another reason we don't want to do that is a lot of times if you are thinking about pulling it off the ground, then it causes people to shrug. So watch that with your students. How many of you guys are instructors? Okay, so about half and half. So something to look for, because if they're pulling, then they're going to come up here in a lot of cases, okay? So you want them to remember to keep their shoulders down and in their pockets and in that standing plank by pushing through the ground versus pulling off the ground, okay? The next step from here, and obviously in this setting, we're doing this a lot faster than we would if you were in a class, so we're kind of progressing you guys pretty quickly. But the next step from here would be to move on to the swing. Um, if you have someone deadlifting and they can't reach their bell, then elevate their bell, okay? That would be the regression from the deadlift, we regress back to an elevated deadlift. Then to progress to the swing, you're gonna take a step back away from your bell. We could probably, can we spread out a little yeah, bit more? Yeah, let's scoot back a little bit. Okay, not too, too far, because he's recording you guys. <laughs> but we do want you to have space and yeah. be safe, okay? So you're gonna still hinge at the hips the same way. So load back. Um, Nagar and I are going to come back and make sure you guys are loading, give you that feeling of what a loaded um, hinge should look like. And actually, I'll just show you right here with her. Okay, so if you're training your students, you can kind of guide through their hips, pull them back, and tell them not to let you pull them over. That's going to load your glutes and your hamstrings. And then she already knows to load her lats. So she's kind of like breaking the handle of the bell before she hikes. Okay, and then I'll let her pick up from there. So I'll show you what the swing should look like. <laughs> Okay, so the great thing is, you can see, it has that nice pretty float. She's not trying to pull it to the top, okay? The hips are driving, the arms are guiding. And it does not necessarily have to get to chest level when you're beginning, okay? This is where it, it can go as go high as your waist. My, what my hips are doing. Okay, yep. so it's all about the power of the hips. She's keeping her lats engaged and she's letting her hips drive the movement, okay? But before we have people do that, we're just gonna start moving the bell a little bit. So she's gonna get in that position and she's gonna do a little bit of a pendulum. Okay, let it come forward. Push it back, let it come forward. Okay, so that's where you guys are gonna start. <laughs> and make sure your body should not be moving and rocking, okay? So remember if you're Let's just pretend right here that you're stuck in concrete, okay? So your arms are gonna move, so let them go back and they'll come forward. See how they come forward on their own if you really load them? So throw it back, let it come forward. You're flipping That's the it. bell up, okay? It's probably a, a wrist movement. We always say in kettlebells you don't have wrists. <laughs> here, you don't, you don't have any, you don't have wrists. So towards the end of the set when I get tired, so I start. Yes. Yeah, you don't have to death grip it. It's just straight. like a hook. Yep. You're, you're just you're, hooking you're, the bell. You're flipping your wrist, and that's what's making the kettlebell okay. flip up. And that's going to change your timing on this. The more as well. you load it back, the easier it's going to. It come might back even cause you to on scoop. its own. Okay. Yeah. So really push it back behind you. So just just think about keeping your wrist straight on the back swing. Yep. Okay. The next step, you guys are going to do the same pendulum. I don't want you to overthink it. You're just going to hike your bell. Hike. 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 Stand up. Don't Set think about swinging the kettlebell. Just, Just stand, stand up. up aggressively. Okay. Swing, yep. swing, swing, stand up. How's that feel? It's okay? Nice. Everybody already is getting a lot better. <laughs> It's just really easy. It just keeps you from Good. not overthinking it. Because if we told you to swing right away, people yeah. would be all up here, right? It would all be in the shoulders and the arms. And we both, um, actually a lot of us, but we both were talking earlier about this drill, is for people that use their arms, and we need to teach them that it's not about the arms at all, we put a weight belt on and a chain around the bell. Thanks, right now. <laughs> and you don't use your arms. You hinge, yeah. the bell moves. You don't need arms to do a kettlebell swing. Okay. Yeah, just hook You got to get out of your head and into your body. That's okay. what you need to do. <laughs> and the great thing with that is once you teach someone, it, I mean, it clicks so easily on what they're doing with their hips, but you can also use that as a regression for people that have shoulder problems. If they've been through a shoulder surgery and they feel like they can't work out, make them come into the gym and they can still swing because they're not using their arms or their shoulders at all. 
Yeah. Just let them hang. Okay. So do the swings again. Do now two pendulums and then stand up. But just hook the bell. You don't have to over grip it. Yeah. Okay. It's just right here. Hooked. So, so when we're doing dynamic movements like this, kettlebell swings, cleans, snatches, anything that's very dynamic and it flows, it's not a grind like a squat or a deadlift. You want to only hold on to the kettlebell as much as is necessary to hold on to the kettlebell. That's it. Whatever amount of pressure you need to apply on that handle in order to keep it in your hand. That's it. Absolutely. Okay. So just two hikes and stand up. Then one hike and stand up. And then just do a couple reps. Good. Stand up aggressively. Stand up like you mean it. There we go. Yep. There it is. Even more aggressively. That's it. Nice. So keep on. No, it's okay. That's right. I'm going to help you here. So start it back down here. Okay. Do one hike. Good. Good job, okay. girl. I'm going to hike. How are you doing? Okay. You? Hike. And then aggressively stand up. Nice. Okay. So it's going to come forward. You can rest. You're just trying to just hook like this. Just hook We're going to talk about the breathing really quick while Karen helps um, Kelly. The breathing okay, so for hike. the kettlebell swing think about and really <laughs> right. just about you're every box jump. So you're going to hike the bell is back. It's an inhale on the back swing and you're going to inhale through your nose. And it's an exhale through your mouth as you lock out. You can choose to get power tall. breathe. Right a lot of times people don't want to power breathe because they, they find it to be like silly yep, or embarrassing. Um, don't stop. I think exercise in general is silly and embarrassing. I don't I don't think that the breathing really makes much of a difference. But it's keep going. Keep going. Really load it behind you. I want to hear floor. your breath. And you don't have to do the hiss. You can, okay? Or whatever right it is here, you want to do. You can just hook it like this. You need to be sure okay. that you, you don't are have to over pushing it. out your breath aggressively because that's what's going to create your shield. So if you're holding your breath, a lot of times you're either going to get too tense or too loose. So just make sure that you're allowing that flow of breath to happen. And the next thing we're going to do is the dead swing or yes. a start stop swing. So what we like to do is we usually like to do teach the pendulum and then we teach the dead swing instead of going straight to doing a bunch of reps. Because you're not, a lot of times if you're teaching people or if you're just starting out, and some of you guys might not be trainers, but you might end up in a position where you're, 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 you're coaching your friends. Hey, come work out. And you're teaching them how to do a kettlebell swing. So we like to go from the pendulum to the start-stop swing because it doesn't require a bunch of reps. And a lot of times you see people fives, they're great, one, two, three, five, six, seven, it starts falling apart. So the dead stop requires you to reset every single time. Think of it like when you're doing a heavy deadlift. You're gonna reset at the bottom before you do your next pull. Okay? Okay. So And it's great for learning the swing, and it's also great when you're advancing to your next belt. Come back to this and just power it. Make sure you have enough power in every rep before you start loading more and more reps, okay? So you're gonna see she's gonna approach it just like she would start a regular swing. She's gonna hike, she's gonna stand, she's gonna safely set it back down, reset, and start again. So these are single reps, start-stop reps. Okay? So do like five. Make sure the, are you gonna deadlift? You're not gonna swing? Are you going to swing? Okay. And get okay. really tall, okay? You, yeah. you don't have to like power you through with the hips. There you watch. go, right there. You'll get a lot from watching. Good. Nice. There's one thing I want you to think of. You can go high, and that's okay, and it's light. But here's what I want you to think about. Stand up, bring your arms out in front of you. Okay. This is your plank. So if you can let it float up there and your, and your shoulders you are staying packed, to. that's yeah. fine. You're, it it's just to go gonna be, you, you, you can need, if you're reaching too far, here, you're not gonna be able to just turn it your lap on. Staying packed. Okay, let's look. No, it all depends on your levers, absolutely. Yeah. So it's gonna be different for every person. Okay. It's usually gonna be about a foot, but it just depends on your yeah, levers. And you'll find good. that sweet spot and then you won't even think about it. I'm gonna let you do another swing and I'm gonna catch it. Okay, that's why I'm staying off to the side. Just far enough we'll away that you can still on turn on your lines. Just a quick test. Okay, get one more. Okay. I'm going to catch, but only because it's light. Put your shoulders in your pockets. Nope, hang on to doing great. Put your shoulders in your pockets. Feel the difference? Yeah. It's just a tiny bit. So you want them I'm sorry. here. Just a little bit right there. Okay, I'm going to let it go. And then find that position again. Uh, I don't really make so noise anymore. So you're just bracing anymore. at the top. 
This is something that we do talk down. about. We teach power breath in the beginning because people aren't used to yep. that type Just of aggressive nice breath. And, and over time, okay. you use don't power open breath up when here. you need it. Get tall. And you don't necessarily use it every time. So if you've ever seen videos of me swinging or doing anything really, you know, like this, you're not going to see so me don't. doing a lot of power breathing until I need it. Yeah. But you, we like to teach it in the beginning, and then people can kind of just find what works. I actually, I just want you to breathe. <laughs> That's all I want. Breathing is non-negotiable. <laughs> as long as you breathe, we're good. Okay. One other thing that we see with the swing is, you know, so many people see videos or they see other people doing swings and they feel like they have to be here. You do not have to get to chest level. If you're starting with a new bell, it's absolutely fine to stop at the waist. Okay? If that's where your hips take the bell, don't muscle it the rest of the way. Okay? So it doesn't matter what size the bell is, it's all in the power of the hips. So if I'm going to start here and I'm not using my hips very much, now I am. It's all on the volume of tension I use is how far my bell floats or does not. Okay? So try adjusting the volume really quick. This will be something that will be helpful for you. Still power the hips, but think about just swinging to about your waist. Okay? Yes. You basically look at the horizon. So find a position, obviously in here we're not looking at the horizon, but think about looking at the crack of the floor and the wall when you're down. And then when you stand up, you're looking at the same place. Otherwise, if you look down and you look up, you start chicken necking. Okay. So just find that position where you can look forward without cranking your chin up. Okay. So just swing to your waist. See, that fixture's already. Just thinking about swinging lower. Breathe, 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 breathe. Good job, girls. Good. See if I'm plank next? Yeah. Okay. So let's, um, we both like to add a drill back into, like, your swing. So if you want to do it as a circuit, it's just a, just a way to repattern. So let's go back to your plank. Because the top of your swing is your plank. So we want to readdress it in the plank position, and then you find that same tension at the top again. Okay? So on your elbows and toes, and we're going to come by and fix things. And if we try to knock you over, don't let us. Okay? okay. It's going to bring you up just a little bring bit. Your belly tuck, button tuck, into your spine a little now, bit more. I want you to push through squeeze, here. Squeeze, this hand, but drop I'm this hand. Try to push you. Push, don't push, let me. push through. Nope. Push through here. Like squeeze, squeeze. Feel the difference there? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Now you're all okay. synced up. Good. And tighten your quads okay. too. Same thing. Good. Drop the hips Good just a little bit. Good. Point towards nice. your face. Point your belly button towards your face and corkscrew the shoulders in. Good. Joanne, I want you to squeeze your glutes together. Same thing, I'm going to tuck your hips Pull forward. your kneecaps up, right there. engaging Squeeze your quads, shoulders. push back into there. your heels. And then don't let me knock you over. And I'm going to try to push Good. You. Nice job. Bro. We'll do double team you, Steph. Yep. <laughs> drop here, drop here, drop here. Whoop, but not your hips. Yep. And yep, push squeeze. into your shoulder blades. There you go. Yep. <laughs> squeeze your butt, squeeze your butt, squeeze your butt, squeeze your butt. There you go. Nice job, girl. Rest. Okay. So the tension that you just felt in your plank, stand up and find that again. Right here. We're in a standing plank. Okay, so your lats were engaged, your abs are braced, your glutes are tight, your kneecaps are pulled up, and you're pressing into the ground. Okay, and now take your arms out. Top of your swing, mm -hmm. right? Okay, and then you're gonna hinge, find it again. Okay, now go back to your bell and find that position. <laughs> at the top, I'm going to give you a little push. Okay? For yours, keep going. Think keep about going. I just want you to know. Again. Just as high as your waist. That's going to keep you tight in your core. There you go. And then you're going to get the float up to chest level Good. versus feeling like you, you have the difference. to get into the chest. It that's the kind of power you want on the back swing. Okay. The more power you so put into the back swing, at the, top, the more power you can have on the extension. Tension, relaxation. And that's what's really going to allow you to um, tension. move more efficiently Float. and then move more powerfully. Because if you're wasting that energy on the back swing, you're working twice yes. as hard as you need so to. You're relaxing when you're taking the, that big sniff in. The and then you're tensing when you do the, the exhale. 
And it doesn't have to be that crazy rough. Like a lot of people get weirded out by that. Like sounding like a snake, should I yeah. make this? It, it doesn't have to be that way. But what you're gonna do is the more experience you get, the more you're gonna find how much breath you need for a given weight or a given skill. So it may be in the beginning you're like, and then it's going to, okay? So it will evolve as you get more experience with swinging, okay? You can also just do an, ex, um, a, an a loud count, one, two, and still get that brace and breathe behind the shield, okay? So just find what's comfortable for you, okay? Anything? Yeah, it's good. Okay. I think your swings look pretty friggin' great. Yeah, I think they do. Okay, so let's give you guys a couple things. We're obviously advancing this a little bit quicker, like we said, than we would if you were in a class or com coming to a course or cert, because we want to give you guys some ideas. Um, if you've ha spent some time on two-hand swings, then we would go to a one-arm swing. But what's really, really important is that you treat it no different. The setup is the same. So don't walk up to a bell and think, today I'm doing two-handed swings, tomorrow I'm doing one-arm. Okay? It's no different. You still chop at the hips, you still load the lats, and then you move an arm out of the way. Okay? And what do you do with this arm? It doesn't matter. Just Whatever. let it hang there. And if it follows, the only thing you don't want is this because that's gonna throw your shoulders out of alignment. You're gonna have that rotation, which we don't want. We wanna stay tight, okay? So hinge, grip, move. And she's not rotating at all on the down swing or on the lockout. So she's not rotating here at the bottom and she's not letting the bell pull her this way at the top. She's got her shoulder packed and her lat engaged. Karen's gonna turn, gonna you don't have to. I don't turn, Yeah. Just a, and if, if you're the type of person who has a rotation problem, you probably don't wanna turn. Right, Karen is very advanced, so she can do that without rotating. Do you have to turn when you have two? When you have two, yes. yes. But then there's the. But then you don't get the rotation up? component because then you're, 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 you're symmetrical. Why couldn't right. I think of that word? Yeah. <laughs> symmetrical. <laughs> yeah. So that's just over time. And the reason we have to turn when we go to two bells is if you don't, they'll hit each other. Yeah. Right? So you got to turn them in. You turn because to allow yourself more room in the hole. Uh -huh. And I don't have to stand very wide. And I'm also, when you turn, I'm not turning towards midline. Yes. I'm not crossing my body. No. She's still it's here. It's still here. Yeah. It's just keeping the shoulder packed. Yeah. And because for me, I do a lot of double bells. Yeah. You teach that. Okay. So it's just natural yeah. movement. I just take a bell away, and it goes that way. Okay. But it's not a must until you get to two. Then you have to turn either thumbs up or thumbs back. Okay. So you want to try it? You can try that. Let's see what it looks like. Here's one thing I want to do with you. Keep going. Okay. I'm going to, from the side, catch your bell on the next one. Okay. And only say this if it's a light bell. Think about Keep really bracing your abs okay. at the top. Pull that Break shoulder that shield. In your there you go. Down. Much down. Better. Down. Nice. Down. Good job. Feel that? Good job. Okay. So the rotation she was talking so about. Don't me start squatting just because, because you've only got that little tiny bell in your hand. <laughs> See, that's where you were just disconnecting. Oh, just you, you were thinking about throwing your that, at that lat. back. Right now so you, you want to do here. that because it's light okay. and you're stronger so than that. Go. But you want to treat it like it's heavy. Keep that shoulder packed. Good. Feel the difference? Yes. Okay. If not, yes. if you rotate you at the top and throw it back, it's out here. Throw it back every time. Like you want to throw it to somebody behind you. The other thing that's going to happen go. with that it's much is better. those of you guys that do teach this is Got the it. more people you see, Good. the more you're going to have an so, eye for the little things, right? Because think to about that back a beginner, swing as the this thing looks that like the top of the swing, you right? To have a powerful swing. But what's going on with and my shoulders? You, I'm totally leaking my tension. Little right by now. little, my shoulders are going to start muscling But to the average person, this looks like the top using your hips. Every this single rep, it's going to be more of is the top of the swing. Not out here, but it's so little. Like you have to start watching those. Things. Absolutely. And okay. sometimes that make sense. Going heavier is the fix. Right. Sometimes that's and all you can you also need video yourself. Just a heavier bell. So what I did with her when you guys were swinging, particularly if you already have I noticed a base of at the top of her swing, and you can she was disconnecting just a little bit at the top. Heavier kettlebell. So because her bell was light down, enough, then and because of the experience I have, I let her know I was going to catch it after she did a couple more reps. I'm like, I'm going to catch your next rep. You'll get so good that you'll get to the point that it doesn't matter how light the kettlebell is. I caught it. You've got it. Because I. I wanted her to feel where she was disconnecting. Right. So when I caught, I said, put it in your pocket. 
down. Okay, yeah. so I let her feel what she was doing wrong yeah. so that she could fix it, fix it. versus just saying, right. you're disconnecting. Yeah. Well, what's that mean? What that so mean? I needed her to feel disconnected and feel and the reset. Okay. Okay, so we're not gonna do a lot with one arm swings right now. We Maybe. just wanna show you guys and yeah. give you a couple of pointers. Spend a good amount of time on two handed swings. Because and Turkish get ups. Yes. Yeah. You want the power, you want the connection. You could do you could spend a year, if you didn't get bored, on just those two exercises. Yeah. There's so much that can come from them and so many different progressions, regressions that you can take with different size bells, different ladders, there's a lot that you can do. But for today, we're gonna go ahead and move on to squatting, and um, then we'll put you guys through a little workout, okay? So can we see a baseline body weight squat? Um, just do like five to 10, and just so that we can see where you're starting, and so that you can see where you're starting, so if we make any changes, you can feel the difference from beginning to end. Okay. All right, cool. So you guys have some pretty good range of motion. Maybe we have this have them partner up and do the prying. Yeah. For the ones that are, so you get that feel of going lower. So we would partner up. So partner A, I'm gonna pull into the squat. She's gonna get be my counterbalance. Some of you may not need a counterbalance, but just just for the purposes of this. Yeah. Okay. So, and the other thing is everyone's squat looks different. Everyone's body is different. Even if we're about the same height. Limb length is different, okay? So our squats are gonna look totally different when you watch them, okay? So I'm gonna go fairly narrow. I can stay with my feet mostly straight, but I'm gonna get you down here, and you're gonna pry, okay? So that's mine, you wanna keep long spine, and then you'll see the difference. So it just depends on body, mobility, there's a lot of different things, okay? So you guys are gonna get there. And did you see how we pulled into the squat? We're not just dropping. We're engaging, we're pushing through the floor, and we're pulling ourselves down. So that's what I want you guys to practice really quick before we load it. Pattern it before you load it. Okay, just practice. Here's what I want you to do. go ahead and go to the bottom. Yeah. Okay. Now I want you to think about dropping your hips. Get intimate with your squat. Pushing your knees out, and I want you to turn your heels out. So not the toes, just the heels. Okay. Turn your toes in just a little bit more right there. Feel the difference? And get tall in your spine. Okay? Come back up. That's Do all right. More. Stay down there for, a, for just a few seconds. Push out here. Good. Push out, push Feel out, it. Push out. Can you go a little deeper? So that's going to drop, drop a little open up your hips. Good. Okay, so there. Yeah, just go to where you can. You guys both legs? When you guys are squatting or you're helping people squat, remember, not only are they going to look different, you need to know what's going on with them. Okay? So go to where you can for your strength and pain free. We do not squat into pain, yeah. okay? If you have anything clicking in the hips or anything weird, and I'm just telling you this from experience, I had some pain for a while and I finally went and check, got it checked out and I had a labral tear, okay? And it, I, it wasn't keeping me from doing anything. I just had pain in the bottom. It felt like it was clamping shut. Really probably shouldn't have been squatting, especially not as much as I was squatting and pistols for the Iron Maiden. I was training for that. So as soon as all that was done, I went and had it checked out. And so you, you really have to listen to your body. Okay? We also don't load dysfunction. Right. So it's okay to work on, like let's say you don't have the ankle mobility to squat with your heels on the ground. That's fine. We're gonna create a heel raise for yourself or your client or whoever. And you're gonna work on grooving that pattern, but you're not gonna add load to it. You have to earn the right to add load to your patterns. Okay. So pattern it, practice it, perfect it, load it, load it, okay? It doesn't have to be rushed, it doesn't have to be a beat down. This is something that's gonna keep you lifelong strong, not strong today, injured tomorrow, start over, strong again, injured again, okay? Just think about the longevity, okay? Especially as we get older. So squat overview, your feet, it's different for every person. I'm just right outside of my hips and I have a slight turn. Karen's a little bit narrower and her feet are straightforward. It just depends. Whatever you do, I want your feet to look the same. I don't want one foot here and one foot here. Okay, there are, there are opportunities to do that and that's something that Jen could talk to you guys about with biofeedback, but we're gonna go symmetrical, okay? And we are going to pull down into the squat with the knees spread. Do you girls see how wide my knees are? 
that my elbows are on the insides of my knees, okay? We're gonna look straight ahead. We're not gonna look at the floor because what happens when we look at the floor? All right, we're here. So we're gonna look straight ahead, tall chest, and breathe out, and that's your swing lockout. Okay, so just do five like that. Steph, I want you to try, think about widening your Nico. heels. Like drive your, up. The length of your legs. Good. Drive up powerfully. Okay. Yeah, let's just see where you're Hold at. Hold really down, I'm gonna have you move inhale, around a little drive bit. up powerfully. Exhale. Okay. So turn your toes in slightly, but your heels out slightly. Good. I'm just, I'm just finding your groove. Nice. This may not be it. Does that feel okay? No? Okay. And your squat already looks more different out. just okay. after doing that prime. I just don't want them so far out. Your you're going much in. deeper. If you turn your heels and then out a little bit more and then your toes out, you're probably find a better groove okay. versus otherwise, if your heels are in really narrow, then your toes are going to keep creeping out and then you might have this weird thing where your knees are not tracking your toes. Does that make sense? Okay. So it's really kind of getting down there, doing that prying and mm -hmm. finding the optimal position for where you are right now. It's gonna feel a little bit easier once you grab the kettlebell because it's gonna create a counterbalance. But one thing that you could do is you could do some RNT, some reactive neuromuscular training. Put a band around your knees, put a band around your ankles. And when you, and you can even just, you can even go here, just pull in and out. You could even squat with them on and, and pattern that. Okay. Karen's gonna show you how to do a goblet squat. Okay, so first is how do you get the bell safely to here? Okay, we're not gonna lean over and try to, you know, kind of curl it up. You want to hinge, just like you were gonna do with your deadlift. Reach for the bell, and then you're gonna use the hips and the breath to here, okay? Which can be an exercise on its own. Yep, it's one of my favorites, actually. Okay. <laughs> Once it's here, you're going to pull yourself into your squat. Stay tall, shout. If you get this deep, your elbows are in between your knees, not on top of your Yeah, knees. and they're not down here, okay? So They're nice right. and tall. Pull back down. And then safely set it down. Let's try that. Try five-ish. Okay. Good, Kara. Beautiful. Good. Good. There you it's go. Good. Uh, it's a little slippery too. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Now, when you're at and the bottom when there, you try your to get breath, tall, especially when you squat heavy. Instead of trying to get tall, you're through gonna your inhale neck. on the way down. So inhale through the nose, down into your belly. Okay, good. Look straight and ahead. And then exhale on the way back straight up. Straight ahead and pry and you guys, your chest when you're open. Breathing, there you go. Yeah. This is something good. that I do to you that might so be helpful. So it seems like there's a little bit of a mobility. Is I actually but try to visualize the air path. Now, am I really breathing out my feet? No. But what I do is I try to visualize that breath path. Where's the breath going that's gonna be most beneficial for my lift? So if I'm inhaling, down into my belly. When I'm exhaling, I'm visualizing that the breath is pushing out my feet. And that's gonna give me more power on the way up. So it's a tension breath and it's powering through the hips, but I'm visualizing pushing through the ground, okay? So just think about, see if that helps. And Steph, before you do that, there's two ways to get it. I showed you the one that was just straight up. You can start it in front of you, but hike Swing. it back if you're going to. Yeah. So don't try Swing to it pick back it up first. from here. You would have to hike it and then come here or get it closer to your body. Perfect. Right there. Yeah. There you go. Out of girl. Really good. Nice job, okay? Jill. Good job. Good. Good. Look, take a little bit more time going down, Jill. You're super mobile, so you can just yeah, drop down I there. Don't realize how fast yeah, when I was at, exactly. Yeah, same thing with my PCC with the, with mm -hmm. the squats. I was going too fast. Because you're so, like, so mobile that you can just down. drop. Yeah. 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 yeah, and what you'll find, one thing that with her having you slow it down, get down there and see if you get to that place where you've already lost your like your glutes are completely relaxed and you can hang out there all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then come up like a half an a inch. Bit. Mm -hmm. I love that. And then yeah. you'll feel yeah. where you stay tight. Yeah. Okay, and that's for anyone that's like super mobile. Like you can yeah. get down there and hang out all day long. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah, I stay, I'm like that all day. Yeah, I'm yeah. In that okay. Which is great. Like, come back down there. Okay, so push out on your knees. Yeah, so okay, like now this, come up like this far. Here, so here is where I'm using it, I yeah. feel. Like, yeah, you know, I'm like, oh. you're just chilling, yeah. Okay, so you guys feeling good? Because you don't want to be in that okay. super chill spot when you've got so a whole lot of weight on your everyone back. Everyone has yeah. a bell. Exactly. You should have that kind of mobility. In this group, great. you good watching? You're gonna jump back in? Okay, so do you guys have any questions before we go on to you guys doing a workout? Because the workout's gonna give you practice in the two drills that we just did. 
But do you have any other questions before we go there? One thing nope. that we like to do if you're having a particular issue with whatever the exercise is, but you're still at a place where you're doing it safe enough to do it repetitively, but you want to clean it up and sort of master it, just make it a little tighter, a little bit more dialed in. Whatever the issue is, practice a drill in between exercises that's going to help pattern the exercise. So if it's a mobility issue, you're working on mobility in between. If it's a stability issue, maybe you're doing core like plank stuff or TGUs or something in between the exercise just to help dial in the pattern. That's just something to think about with regards to your training. It also gives you more bang for your buck with your training. So you, during your rest periods, you're utilizing your rest periods actively. Okay. Do we do so the same workout as here's what we're going to do for the workout. Yeah, but since they all have bells, what we do is we'll do an A and a B. A oh, will good, swing good. while B squats and yes. then switch. Okay. So the workout is going to, you all have your own bell, but we're still going to kind of go a you go, I go, a partner drill. So you're going to swing and you're going to squat. And then you're going to swing while you squat and then you rest. So you're doing two exercises back to back and then you rest and then you go again. So we go A, B, A, B, A. Mm -hmm. Okay. So A, A, B, A, B, A. Okay. So the A's are going to do 20 swings while the B's are doing 10 squats. Okay. And then you switch. Ready? Okay. And then we'll tell you what you're doing next. A does 20 swings, B does 10 And if 10 you want a body squats. weight squat, you can, or if that's feeling uncomfortable, then just feel free to Counting like, is going to be the hardest can. part. Start. Yep. All right. Remember everything that we've gone over. Get nice and tall. Don't tuck your chin in. Good. Get up here. Look up here. Atta girl. There you go. Good. Good job. And your swing is super Good. powerful, but let it float for a second before you Just throw it back. Just keep remembering to spread those knees. Let it stuff. float. Throw it back. Good. Good. Spread the floor. Atta girl. Nice. Good. Don't forget to breathe, ladies. When you're done, go ahead and set it down. <laughs> That's okay. Kelly, you have the mobility. You have the mobility to do swings with your legs almost completely straight, but that's not going to be your strongest position. It's not wrong. It's just not your strongest position. So just think about you're hinging. Great. If you bend your knees a little bit more, you'll be able to load your glutes a little bit more, which is going to be more powerful for a heavier bow. All right. If you just did swings, it's time for 10 squats. 10 squats. Good. Really power good. back step. That's You're good, Jill. Stop make right it more there. Efficient. That's great. Nice. Good. good job. Nice and active. Looking good. Good job, Kara. Remember, Jill, brace, brace, brace. Okay. That's your shield. Once you're done, keep you're it tight. Keep it fast nice. and loose. Because we've had all this tension. Yeah. Have a little bit of relaxation. And then we're going to go to the next round. <laughs> okay? Yep, fast and loose. There you go. Have a little bit of a rest. The next round after the rest is going to be 18 swings, eight squats. Okay, we're going down by two. <laughs> At least we're not making you do 19. Okay. All right, we ready? Eight squats or 18 swings. Begin. A little bit more bend in the knees, Kelly. That a girl. And then there's all this power in that. Nice. Let a bell float. Good. You don't want to muscle it so much. Let it float and then hike. Switch your breathing, Kara. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. There you go. And you can probably even do a little bit more knee bend as well. For a little bit more. Yeah. So you should feel your glutes and your hamstrings if you're swinging a lot. All right. Okay. Swap. Yes. 18 swings, 8 squats. Let's try to get through one more round before our minute's up. Nice. Inhale, exhale. Good. Great job, ladies. Looking good. Good. Shake it out. And if you were swinging, then you're squatting, and vice versa. So now we're on 16 swings. Oh, wait, did they all squat? Yeah, everybody did yeah, both. You yep. did eight squats? 16 yeah. swings, six oh, squats. Did well, you, you do 18 swings, and eight? You were squatting, right? OK, 16 okay. swings, six squats. Six squats. 
Feel the difference when you send the hips back further? Nice. Nice. Good job, girls. Step your squat's getting better every time. Really dialing it in. Keep the weight closer to you. That way you don't have to hold it think so much with your arms. Think about pushing your knees out. Yeah. Like you almost think up. about like yeah, allowing really it to rest about you're on pushing you. The outside that of your way you're not having to hold it with your Otherwise, arms. Otherwise, when you do that, your arms get tired just, just a little bit. So we're switching. You're either squatting or swinging. No, you're gonna do the other one before we switch. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'm so intimidating. <laughs> nice. Do you guys have any final questions Good job. before we switch? Good. Awesome job, girls. It's my first workout this weekend. Well, if you guys have more questions, <laughs> birthday you can workout. Reach out to us. Good job. Um, we both have a lot of videos out. We have a lot of stuff oh, on we YouTube. Have. Everybody do um, we do periscopes. We do a lot of stuff where we can yeah. do tutorials, answer questions. So feel free to reach out if you guys have more to learn. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. We can do that. You girls are great today. I'm I'm really impressed with how everybody's moving. So thank you for giving us your effort. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. you guys did awesome.